Well, hi viewers. Thanks for joining us here at Simply FYI. Todd. Tina. And today we're going to be talking about the, our nine best tips to have the most successful vacation or time that you spend in Switzerland. We were fortunate enough to spend the first 15 days of September in Switzerland and we want to share our nine tips with you. We're in the backyard here, we're enjoying an adult beverage, so we hope that you'll stay with us for the length of the video and hope you enjoy it. Please hit the subscribe and the like button and help us reach our goal of 500 subscribers. That's right, 500. So we'll start off right now with number nine. So number nine is our laundry day. We went to a town called Grimmawald in Switzerland and we found out kind of the hard way that there was no laundry mats in that town. Right, we had already been traveling for six days. So that was kind of the day that we had run out of all, all of our clothes and we needed to hit the laundromat. And we got there and they said, nope, there aren't any. So we found out that the Airbnb we were at, they would charge us $5 a load. That's $5 to wash and $5 to dry. So we thought, yeah, we could do it in, in a bathtub. So rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, we did our laundry in the bathtub. Right. We'll often do when we travel just because of the, the speed at maybe which we're, we're moving or need to get out of the hotel real early the next day and don't have time to wait for it to come back from a service or go down to the laundromat to do it. It just may not be handy, so we'll often do our laundry in the bathtub or the sink, or a combination of both. So, that's what we did there in Grindelwald. All right, on to number eight. Uh, number eight, we've got some notes here because we wanna make sure we don't leave anything out. Number eight is? We found out when we were shopping for items in, uh, that the best place were in the, the best, what we were looking for, we actually were looking for some of the bells that the cows wore. And we ended up finding a wind chime in the town Murin. Um, they had them and there were a couple different sizes and a couple different prices and we chose and thought that the $45 one was a pretty reasonable price for the wind chimes and we brought it home. What led us to choose that we wanted the cowbells for the wind chime to bring home is, was when we were hiking we were often we'd often get out where it was somewhat remote, away from the towns and other people, and you could always, without fail, hear the faint noise of the cowbells from the cows eating. And it was just a, it was just a fantastic sound to be there in the mountains of Switzerland and hear that faint, that faint bell ring in there all the time. And I'll include a picture of the shop where we bought the item there in Mirren case you would like to go through there and, and visit with the gentleman that we bought it from. I'm going to grab the one right here and show you what we ended up getting. And keep in mind we searched high and low for a wind chime and Amurin was the only town that we found anybody to have the wind chime. And we just kind of stumbled across it. We were walking around to Amurin and Todd said, hey, look there. And turn around look, sure enough, there's a wind chime in this store. And we just fell in love with it. Oh, thanks for waiting. Yeah, and we had actually even talked to the lady at the Iger Hotel who grew up there. Her family was like fourth generation mm -hmm. of owning the hotel. And she said she'd never ever seen a wind chime. And so we went down about, I don't know, three or 400 yards down. And sure enough, we found one. And this is what it looks like here. Hope you can get a good look at that. And a little sample of the, uh, noise it makes so we're really happy we found that so now we're on to number seven all right number seven number seven might be higher up on the list for people traveling with their children but number seven for us was the availability and location of clean public restrooms Surprisingly, where we found the cleanest restrooms cons consistently, no matter where we were at, was at the train stations. And they were very clean, very large, very nice. And um, once in a while, the train station might 
charge a half a franc, so about 50 cents, for the uh, to get into the restroom. But if for some reason you catch yourself without change, you can merely wait a little bit and hopefully catch the door as somebody's coming out. Mm -hmm. And the train stations are, are pretty, pretty well located in the smaller towns especially, to where it's not that far a walk. But we did always uh, keep as a backup the McDonald's restaurants where there is, uh, seem to be a McDonald's in every city that we went to or town. So. Lar large city. Yeah, so that was that was our fallback. And also, if you find that you need to use the restroom, the trains have have pretty spacious and clean restrooms on the train. Okay, our number six tip has to do with personal safety. I know if, if you're like us, whenever we're traveling, we always want to know as much as we can about the areas, the towns, or the cities, where we'll be to kind of get a feel for, for how safe they are and how aware we need to be of our surroundings. And I can say with 100% uh, security that we found absolutely no problems when in the smaller towns or cities like Lauterbrunnen, Interlaken, Muren, Grindelwald, um, Thune, Zermatt, just absolute no problems whatsoever. No panhandlers, nobody trying to scam us out of anything. We, we often um, were out after dark, later in the evening, as well as other people, absolutely no issues whatsoever, completely a safe environment. As always, maybe travel in, in more than one person, just because you never know if you might be that, that victim, but um, absolutely no problems for us, and we were, it was really a nice way to travel. So, number five. So if you like to eat food and try different things wherever you find you're traveling. Do like to eat food? Oh yeah. <laughs> so number five, if you're a foodie person who enjoy eating at the restaurants when you travel, be prepared to pay a range of $30 for breakfast and lunch and $50 to $60 per person for dinner at a typical restaurant. That's nothing special. Like a hamburger we looked up and it was like $42 for one person. So what we did is uh, we were able to go to the grocery store and buy what we wanted and cook in our Airbnbs or we could buy alcohol there. And we just found that for our budget, that that worked for us. And there's two major uh, like shopping marts or grocery stores there. Coop, C-O-O-P, and Migros. Yeah. M-I-G-R-O-S. Yes. Yeah. Migros. And so uh, just kind of plan around the larger, the larger coops and Migros will close as early as 7 p.m. So just be aware of that. And also the one advantage is that they both also have smaller convenience stores scattered throughout the towns of the cities typically. And they stay open much later. And the pricing is not much different than the larger grocery store itself. In fact, in the larger grocery stores, they did not sell alcohol. And the smaller convenience stores did, so just be aware of that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and post a picture of a bottle of wine that we actually bought in Basel. Basel, right? Yeah, Basel. And from the Coop convenience store, just down the, the road from the hotel, and it was a imported, in, imported just for Coop, and it was from France, and it cost about $6.50 US, and it was really a pretty good bottle of wine. We're not wine connoisseurs, but it was really a pretty good bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But basically, you could buy your groceries there and save quite a bit of money. We bought pizza. We actually bought a, a ready-to-make fondue kit that we uh, actually lasted us for two, two uh, dinners. Mm -hmm. So again, we chose the grocery stores or the convenience stores. We actually, when we travel, we often do that, but we like to actually sample the desserts as well as a lot of the different breads, so pastries and breads, and there's plenty of that there, and, and we enjoyed it every opportunity that we had. Lastly, with respect to the restaurant eating, just keep in mind that tipping is not expected over there. It's usually for just exceptional service, or if you just that's what you want to do, of course, obviously do it. 
right, we're on to our number four. Our number four tip has to do with the train schedule or the gondola schedule or the cable car schedule. So we hiked almost every day that we were, we were traveling, uh, about 122 miles I think we got in over the, the course of the 15 days. And one thing is important, you'll find yourself taking the train or the cable car or the uh, gondola or a combination of the three to get to your trailhead to hike. And so make certain that when you get off of your last stop that you know which train or cable car or gondola you're going to be taking back because some of them stop running as early as 4.30 in the afternoon like the one that brings you back from the Matterhorn hike. So be aware of that. Otherwise, uh, it might ruin your day if you miss that last train <laughs> or, skip, or gondola. Or and you're cable running car. to catch that, and they don't wait. They nope. just keep going. Nope. And our number three tip is if you're going to use the cable car and the trains you'll, and you need help, ask the information desk in the train stations. Don't, don't ask the people up on the platform because they, they really don't know. Um, but the people in the information area, they're exceptional with their assistance and are very patient. And like I said, don't ask any of the rail employees on the platform. This is not their expertise. We did ask twice, and twice we missed our train from talking to some, uh, some worker up there on the platform. So we did get wrong information, so please, please go to the information area, and they will lead you in the right direction. Right, and another thing that's very helpful when you're traveling on any of the three modes of transportation, gondola, cable car, or train, is to use the SBB app. You can download it on your phone, and we'll actually we'll be doing a short video on what we learned while using the, the app as well as the trains, how to, how to maneuver the platforms and the train schedules a little bit, and we'll hope that you'll join us when we post that video. But number two is make certain before you leave your home to download the Swiss Rail Pass app. And I'll include a couple pictures here of the obviously the download in Google Play and then the, the app itself and then how you can also use that app for planning and pricing out your trips to decide whether you should be buying any of the Swiss Rail Passes, the half, uh, the half pass and the, the full Swiss Rail Pass. We actually bought the 15-day Swiss Rail Pass. You do need uh, internet service to use it pretty much everywhere. If you have questions about anything, go to the information desk, the train station, and they'll actually print you off an itinerary as if you had a real ticket. They'll print it off and they'll even give you some some uh, different options too. So mm -hmm. again, use uh, use uh, information as much as you can. So that was number two. So that leads us to number one. And this is one thing where we made an assumption and it didn't work out for us. And so it's definitely something that we would change on our next trip. So that brings us to number one. And number one is get a sim card for your cell phone prior to leaving home because we thought we could get one in the zurich airport they didn't have any so we checked in uh, interlochen and in zermatt and they didn't have any so make sure before you leave wherever you are to get your sim card for your cell phone yeah and you can often get those on amazon if you're not familiar with them and and get them sent to you and actually try them a little bit. I think they'll set up to where you can maybe try them. We personally have never bought one, um, but we know people that have and we'll uh, make sure we get one next time because you need the internet to run that SBB mobile app for the trains and cable cars and gondolas. And we often found ourselves needing to pull up that schedule and we couldn't. So we would be looking at the displays at the train station or we'd have to run down to the uh, information desk. Mm -hmm. So again, try and, try and take care of that SIM card uh, before you leave or just plan on using your, your provider uh, with the international service if they have any. So that pretty much wraps up our nine tips yep. for making for a successful trip to Switzerland. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit subscribe, 
and like and we hope that you'll join us on our next video anything else no nope. no nope. nope. all right cheers cheers and we'll see you on our next video bye everyone